Bonjour, hi. Traditional greeting of Quebec these days. We would like to begin by acknowledging that Quebec Community Groups ne Network and its member organizations carry out their activities on partially unceded lands and territories, which were the traditional homes and gathering places for many Indigenous nations, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. The QCGN acknowledges our First Nations have a long and rich history of occupation and stewardship of these lands that long served as a site of a meeting and exchange among nations. The QCGN's recognition and respect for the history of the First Nations and Inuit people is an important step for the history of First Nations and Inuit people. Building trust, creating and renewing relationships with con contemporary Indigenous people and communities. So welcome everyone to Quebec Community Groups Network Policy Forum, English speaking Quebec at a crossroads. This evening, we are kicking off the event by saying thank you and goodbye with a tribute to QCGN President Marlene Jennings. We will get a chance to hear from Marlene herself and also a few friends who have been with her along the way and couldn't pass up the opportunity for a friendly roast. Before we start, a few housekeeping uh, points I'd like to cover. Only those who have been invited to speak this evening may unmute their microphone when asked. We ask other participants to keep your microphones muted. We also encourage you to keep your video on so Marlene can see you. She was very eager to find out who was coming. The chat is available for you to use. I encourage you to post messages to Marlene that we will save and send to her. The chat will be moderated and we reserve the right to remove anyone who says something we deem inappropriate. Marlene, over to you to start. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you everyone for being here. So yeah, I'm giving my farewell speech. As you all know by now, I've taken that proverbial walk in the snow. Actually, it wasn't the snow. It was a walk in the rain. Actually, no, it was sitting on my balcony with a cup of coffee. And I have decided to step down from the position of QCGN president. My decision was difficult, but it was also easy. I came to the realization that my multiple commitments make it impossible for me to continue to give this important role all the time it requires to remain truly effective. For close to two years, I've been obliged to delay fulfilling other commitments that I had made prior to agreeing to my election as president. Many of you will recall that in 2020, I was quite reluctant in agreeing to stand for president, but I did agree and was ultimately elected. From the onset, my intention was to fulfill one mandate, which was to come to an end this spring at the AGM. The recent decision to postpone the AGM was well-founded, and I support that decision wholeheartedly. However, remaining president until the fall of 2022 would have required that I continue postponing important personal commitments, which I was unwilling to do. The last 18 months, though, have allowed me to play an active role in QCGN's renewal process, which we call QG, QCGN 2.0. And I've had a lot of fun and pleasure do in participating. Embarking on any process of renewal takes courage as it requires taking a hard look at our assumptions, our relationships, and our ways of operating. The QCGN is stronger for this process. And looking ahead, QCGN will continue to provide a voice, but to a broader range of people within our evolving community. Alors que je m'apprête à passer le flambeau à la présidente intérimaire Eva Ludwig, je demeure persuadée que notre organisme est prêt à faire face à l'avenir et qu'il continuera 
a joué un rôle de premier, premier plan dans la défense des, des intérêts de la communauté d'expression anglaise du Québec. I believe I've played a significant role in the important, even crucial reframing of QCGN as a more genuinely representative voice for our English speaking community and as an active and vital advocate for our community's linguistic rights. My time as president has been fulfilling, but it's also been overwhelming at times. The past that I think is a fire engine going by the street. The past two years have been a whirlwind of activity with substantial upheaval to both principal, to both provincial and federal language legislation with the introduction of Bill 96 and Bill C-13, the demands on QCGN and our dedicated volunteers and staff has increased enormously. This led to an unprecedented le level of activity and rapid response. And I want to commend our volunteers and staff for the formidable job that both these groups have been doing on these two major files. I have come to understand that the nature of our work, QCGN's work, has evolved enormously. QCGN has morphed into an active advocacy organization that our community and political stakeholders look to, to take the lead to provide evidence-informed analysis on issues of importance to English-speaking Quebecers. Working together with community stakeholders, the QCGN was and continues to be a crucial and constructive voice during emotional and sometimes divisive debates. It has been a year of turmoil for Quebec's English-speaking minority community. After years of relative calm on the language front, we found ourselves in the middle of a language storm. As part of its proposed overhaul of the Charter of the French Language, commonly known as Bill 101, the Coalition Avenir Quebec government placed our community squarely in its target. They pinned a bullseye on us. For the first time in a generation, our community hit the streets to oppose oppressive language legislation, ch chanting, Hey, hey, ho, ho, Bill 96 has got to go, young and old, Anglophones, Francophones, immigrants, students, teachers, and parents, thousands of Quebecers of all walks of life marched to the Premier's office to express their disappointment with various, with various aspects of Bill 96. Le projet de loi 96 a été adopté la semaine dernière en dépit d'un retentissant tollé. Nous avons été incapables de bloquer son adoption ou y apporter d'importants changements, mais notre lutte se poursuit. Il est indéniable que cette législation qui a maintenant force de loi aurait des impacts négatifs considérables sur l'épanouissement de notre communauté. Or, Nos moyens de contre-attaque sont limités. L'usage préventif et sans précédent de la disposition de dérogation protège cette nouvelle loi et permet au gouvernement de faire fi de nos droits et ceux de tous les Québécois. The preemptive use of the notwithstanding clause is even more worrisome because it sweeps aside many of our core constitutional protections, basic rights and freedoms long enshrined in both the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Quebec Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms have been discarded by this government. The courts would be powerless to review and remedy infringements on rights otherwise protected under either the Canadian or the Quebec charters. Finally, we are most concerned about the impl implications of a unilateral amendment to the Constitution Act of 1867 that would recognize 
that, and I quote, Quebecers form a nation, that Fra French will, shall be the only official language of Quebec, and that French is the common language of the Quebec nation. Depuis plus d'un an, le QCGN fait entendre une voix importante et constructive dans ce débat émotionnel, parfois hostile. Depuis le dépôt, dépôt du projet de loi 96 à l'Assemblée nationale le 13 mai 2021, le Quebec Community Groups Network a fait connaître à l'ensemble des Québécois et à notre gouvernement les préoccupations majeures de la communauté anglophone. This legislation is littered with destructive measures that will have direct and grave impacts on the rights of English-speaking Quebecers and on our community's vitality. This law will radically alter the future of our community, our province, and our country. We are deeply troubled by the implications of Bill 96 for Quebecers who are not fluent in French, particularly vulnerable individuals, including the elderly, individuals with learning disabilities, the homeless and, the, and immigrants. Beyond the bill, we are worried about how this overarching piece of legislation will impact politics, uh, sorry, will impact policies, programs and regulations as they relate to services to English speaking Quebecers. Nous avons insisté à maintes reprises pour que nos législateurs répondent de façon raisonnable aux sérieuses craintes des Québécois d'expression anglaise, mais ils n'ont pas entendu nos appels ni nos préoccupations. But the battle's not over. We will continue to fight on, and rest assured, I will be part of the fight to convince our government partners that there are more effective and inclusive ways to protect and promote the French language than in this new law that simply doesn't reflect the modern, inclusive Quebec that members of our community have helped build. And now our main battleground moves to the national arena where the federal government has introduced Bill C-13, a long overdue bill aimed at modernizing the Official Languages Act. This federal bill is proposing radical changes that will have adverse impacts on the interpretation of this quasi-constitutional law and Quebec's English-speaking community. Bill C-13 would recognize Quebec's charter of the French language as amended by Bill 96 within the Official Languages Act. Nous pouvons difficilement croire que le gouvernement du Canada envisagera l'adoption d'une législation qui reconnaît une loi québécoise promulguée qui ne tient pas compte des droits et libertés fondamentaux garantis par la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés. Nous, recommand nous recommandons fortement de retirer du projet, du projet de loi C-13 toute référence à la Charte de la langue française. My successor, Eva Ludwig, who has spent many decades immersed in official languages policy, is well armed for this battle. Eva, our treasurer, has agreed to take on the role of interim president between now and the elections at the annual general meeting. Eva, I wish you well and know that I will continue to be here to support you. Meanwhile, the influence QCGN has grown, the influence QCGN has, has grown substantially during the time that I served. And I'm confident that the organization will continue to thrive. I will continue as a member of the board until QCGN's 20, 22 annual general meeting, which as you know, has been delayed until after the provincial election in the fall. I wish to thank each and every board member for their support and active involvement. I also wish to th thank QCGN staff who provided me with a stream, a continuous stream of evidence-based information that fueled my public advocacy on our linguistic rights. I've truly valued the opportunity to work with this strong 
and dedicated team. And finally, I want to really thank our member organizations and community partners for their steadfast, steadfast belief in our English speaking communities, as well as in our fundamental linguistic rights. Thank you for the, the opportunity to contribute to such an incredible organization. I want a special thanks, say a special thanks to Sylvia Martin Lafarge, the executive director. Um, I wouldn't have been a, if people congratulate me all the time and say, Marlene, you're doing a great job as president of QCGN. But a big part of it would not have been possible had I not had Sylvia backing me up, making sure that I had the proper tools in order to do that public advocacy. And she's also fun to talk with. <laughs> I won't tell you what we talked about. She might, but I won't. Wait until I roast you. Yeah. And I just want to say I have really enjoyed filling the role and responsibilities of QCGN president. It has been an honor for me to lead this organization at this crucial crossroads. But my time as president is now at an end, and I'd like to turn it back to Eva. Eva, our new interim president. Eva, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marlene. Inspiring as usual. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I have known Marlene since my early days at the Office of the Commissioner of Official Languages when she was still a member of parliament. She probably doesn't remember our first meeting, but I do. She impressed me then with her passion for her community, for official languages, and especially for her, her concern, even back then, for the Black English-speaking youth and their difficult prospects for their future in Quebec. Even then, Marlene did not mince words. It is these same qualities which have made her an outstanding president of QCGN. Although her presidency was short, way too short in my opinion, she is leaving an indelible mark, not only on QCGN, but on the English speaking community of Quebec at large, and dare I say, all of Quebec. Marlene gave voice in no uncertain terms to all of us in the face of the unprecedented assault by the CAC government on our rights and our very place in Quebec. I know I for one will miss our fearless leader and I'm sure I speak for all of us. Marlene, QCGN has been extremely fortunate to have you as its president. And as for me, I have been blessed to get to know you, work with you as a colleague, and to have you as a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Um... I might have to turn my camera off because I'm starting to tear up and I don't like crying because I do ugly crying. You know, I'm not like some of these actresses that can cry and oh, they look even more beautiful. No, when I cry, it's ugly crying. You know, the nose starts to run and you know. Uh, anyways, Eva, you have become a really precious friend to me. So your words mean a lot and know that I will be supporting you in every way I can, because I think you're what QCGN needs now in the transition. You're fantastic. Thank you, Marlene. But this is just the beginning, Marlene. The evening goes on. Uh, we have a video from the official languages minister, Jeanette Petit-Taylor, who unfortunately was unable to choose join us, but wanted to send a tribute to you, Marlene. As you know, Marlene, the Honorable Jeanette Petit-Taylor was first elected as member of parliament for Moncton Riverview Dieppe in 2015. She has previously served as minister of health and parliamentary secretary to the minister of finance, as minister of 
official languages. She has been mandated to work with official language minority communities across the country, including us, in particular to support uh, their and our vitality. She is also charged with implementing the reforms set out in the white paper, English and French, entitled Towards Substantive Equality of Official Languages, and to promote French, introducing the proposed act on a priority basis and creating more opportunities for young Canadians to access French immersion classes. She is also mandated to protect the institutions of Quebec's English speaking community and support the creation of new education and community spaces for the community. I know Marlene that you have met her several times and I'm uh, glad to introduce the video. Oops, we have a technical difficulty. Sorry that I couldn't join you in person. Good evening, and thank you for inviting me to share a few short words as we celebrate you and your work on behalf of the community, Marlene. I am so sorry that I couldn't join you in person this evening. When I was named Minister of Official Languages, Marlene was one of my first calls that I made. Having also grown up in an official minority community, I thought we would likely have many shared experiences, and that was certainly true. But many conversations with you, Marlene, have really provided me with an education. An education on your community and its priorities, but also on your character, your tenacity, and your constructive approach to issues. In speaking with you and other members of the community, I have come to have a much deeper understanding of the issues and concerns of the community. It has been an immense pleasure getting to know you, Marlene, in this role, and I certainly hope to continue calling you from time to time to hear your thoughts on issues affecting the community. I look forward to continuing the productive and collaborative relationship that we have built with QCGN, and I would like to welcome Eva Ludwig to her interim role as president. I also look forward to connecting with you in the coming weeks as well. In closing, I simply want to say thank you, Marlene, for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do for your community. I would say thank you, but I don't think I should to a video. So we'll uh, go on. Uh, our next speaker is Tiffany Callender, one of Marlene's mentees. Tiffany is the inaugural CEO of the Federation of African Canadian Economics, FACE, and former executive director of the Cote de Neige Black Community Association, one of the oldest Black community organizations in Quebec. Tiffany helped engineer the first ever digital platform collecting race based data in the history of Canada and supported by McGill University and a key advisor on the development of the strongest AI, artificial intelligence, powered digital tool for sourcing public funds and employment for the black benefit of black Canadians called BETA, which is to be released shortly. Tiffany was also the lead on a pan-Canadian strategic advisory committee that raised the biggest amount of public funds for black Canadians in the history of the country to support black entrepreneur and the founder of an edu tech company that aims to support parents with preschool and primary school students from language minority communities succeeded, succeed in the French school system. Obviously, Marlene, you did your mentorship very well. Tiffany? Thank you so much, Ava. Oh, Marlene. Um, it is a pleasure to not only be here to speak to you, 
um, amongst colleagues that admire uh, the work that you've done and contributed. I think that I can definitely say for QCGN, um, you are, you've really contributed at a critical time uh, where we needed to have a voice uh, for our community. And uh, as far as my personal experience with you, uh, what Marlene says goes. So being a mentee is a beautiful thing with Marlene. I'll explain why. And I know she's laughing and she's on mute, but well, the first time we met, I met Marlene, um, we went out for breakfast. And uh, this was when I was actually considering my first run in politics at the municipal level. And I was told that I definitely had to meet with Marlene Jennings, who'd be able to give me some guidance. And she sat down with breakfast and she said, look, this is going to be a hard run. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. You've got to do X, Y, Z. You've got to do A, B, C, and I'm going to be here to help you. And I realized then that in this relationship, uh, Marlene would tell me like it is. She would never steer me wrong. And she would do everything that she could to help me to move forward in a legacy that she helped build for the English speaking black community. I'm not gonna cry either, Marlene. I ugly <laughs> cry as well. <laughs> so I wanted to come here tonight, Marlene, to echo the sentiments of those of us who are here tonight to say that your contribution has been invaluable. You've been an example, not only through your experience and your career, but through your leadership and your, your example. You've definitely changed my life, and I know that I can definitely rely on you for guidance. Everything that you've heard in that uh, rap sheet of projects that I've done is obviously knowing that I could call you at any time to ask you for your support, uh, to have a, a, a shoulder to lie on and cry on sometimes when things got difficult, but more importantly, uh, to be able to find my center, to know that everything that I do will contribute to a larger, a larger and better story for English-speaking Quebecers and folks from our community. So I wanna say thank you uh, for serving in this way at QCGN, for taking time to mentor people like me and giving your time and your voice to things that often sometimes fall on the wayside, but you allow us all to find our center. So thank you, Marlene. And I'll continue to listen to everything that you say, no questions asked, I promise. Okay, well, <laughs> the first thing I'm going to say is, I wanna be like you when I grow up because my family will tell you, I have not grown up. I'm still as silly and ridiculous as always and a belligerent, you name it, okay? And so I learned from you. It's a two-way street and it always has been a two-way street. There are things that you have done and are doing that I could never have done. Um, and so I'm in awe of you and um, thank you. Lots of love and hugs and kisses and sometimes, you know, a little, uh, you know, boot up the behind, but. Always welcome, <laughs> always welcome, keeps me, <laughs> keeps me on course, so that's why. Okay. And, and I just okay. want to say as a closing word, all of those things that I did probably could not have happened if there wasn't a Marlene Jennings ahead of me to do, to pave the way. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's, our, that's truly a gift that you've just given me by saying that. So it means that it's all of the efforts and sometimes, you know, the tears that I shed all by myself because I didn't want anyone to see me crying ugly and think that I was defeated is worth it. All good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we're only continuing, Marlene. It's not over yet. I'm by the end of the evening, you will cry, ugly or not. <laughs> Okay, well, now it's my pleasure to call on Jack Jedweb. Jack is a longtime friend and colleague of Marlene. He's the president of the Association for Canadian Studies and Metropolis Canada, which oversees the country's largest conference on immigration and integration, as well as the chair of the COVID-19 Social Impacts Network. Marlene was a member of the board of the Association for Canadian Studies, an organization which initi initiates and supports activities in the areas of research, teaching, communications, and the tra training of students in the field of Canadian studies. ACS, as it's better known, strives to raise public awareness of Canadian issues. It supports the study of Canada by encouraging interdisciplinary exchanges that complement and connect the efforts of scholars in diverse fields, as well as leaders in the public and private sectors. ACS is committed to raising public awareness 
of significant research and public policy issues and to providing opportunities for advancing debate and action through collaborative activities and publications. Jack is also the founder and publisher of the review Canadian Diversity. Jack? So thanks very much, Eva. Marlene and I go back a fairly long way. I won't say how many years. Uh, and I spent part of my day today in preparation. You can say how many years, Jack, because I don't hide how old I am. I'm 70 years old. I'm going to be 71, November the 10th, and I'm a scorpion. So I have a long memory and I have a real <laughs> bite. Okay. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me about the scorpion thing. So that uh, I got my wife born the same day as you, right? That's, uh, that, that's two scorpions. You know, they say two scorpions, uh, whatever. So, but in any of that, uh, I uh, suspend so my day going back over some, uh, some of your background, your, your roots in the South Shore, your multiple identities, and uh, your ancestry DNA test, your 52% European, your, your joke with your siblings, you know, about your Europeanness and so forth. And then I decide I'm ditching all that. I'm not doing that in the end. And so what I did was I wrote you an original song, right? Which I'm going to sing. I apologize to everyone tonight because I'm not a good singer, right? So please bear with me. This is, I worked very hard on this, Marlene, very hard. I call this song Her Way, right? So, so <laughs> it may be familiar to you. Right? So here we go. And you can sing along if anyone knows this. So, <clears throat> and now the end is near and so she'll face that final curtain. To friends, she'll make it clear. She'll state her case. Sometimes she's certain. She served a term near full, trying to do the things the right way. And much more, much more than this, she did it her way. Regrets, she had a few, but then again, too few to mention. She did what she had to do. She saw it through without exception. She planned each charted course, each careful step along the pathway. But more, much more than this, she did it her way. Yes, there were times I'm sure she knew that she bit off more than she could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, she ate it up and tossed it out. She faced it all and she stood tall and did it her way. For wow. with Maureen, what has she got? If not herself, then she has not to say the things she truly feels and not the words of someone who kneels. Let the record show she took the blows and did it her way. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that's fantastic. And this is designed to make you laugh, not cry. So that's good. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Yeah, we do. And actually, Jack, your voice is better than I was expecting. I don't know if that's good or bad, but you know, my apologies. For it's good. Me, you know, you so. have a good voice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, it can bring a smile to your face. That's the you know, that's the main main thing here. It did. All right, great. And I Good love morning. that, I mean, Frank Sinatra is, uh, you know, a crooner that I loved since I was a little child. Oh, right. And so um, that you would choose that song and apply it to me is a real honor. Thank you. And say hi to Louise for me. I will do that, yeah. So, thank you. It's a great privilege thank knowing you, Marlene, and look forward to many more opportunities to meet and, and do stuff together in the future. Definitely. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. I must say, I must say that was one of the most original roasts <laughs> and, and very well executed. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce um, Eleni Bacopanos. The Honorable Eleni Bacopanos, who recently joined the board of directors of the QCGN, is a public policy analyst, political media commentator, and public speaker. 
Eleni was first elected in 1993 as the Member of Parliament for Saint-Denis. She was re-elected three times in Nahansik. Prior to entering politics at the federal level, she worked in provincial politics with the Liberal Party of Quebec and in the Government of Quebec as policy advisor for the Quebec Premier and Minister of Immigration and Cultural Communities. She serves as a director on a number of non-governmental and not-for-profit boards and is presently the past chair of the National Board of Directors of Equal Voice, whose mission is to elect more women at all levels of government. She has volunteered with a number of Quebec women's organizations, including the Montreal Council of Women, Groupe Femme, Femme Politique et Démocratie, et La Gouvernance au Féminin. She is presently the Vice President of the Canadian Association of Former Parliamentarians. She and Marlene were roommates when they were rookie MPs on Parliament Hill and probably can tell us a lot of stories. Hello. Lenny, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eva, but how can I follow Jack with that? <laughs> uh, that's quite an act to follow, Jack. So, je veux dire premièrement, bonsoir à tout le monde, et merci beaucoup de m'avoir donné cette occasion euh, de vraiment célébrer mon ami qui est un ami depuis 40 ans. Je vais commencer avec une rumeur, Marlene, qui circule à ce moment. <rire> Le rumeur, c'est que tu allais te présenter avec M. Legault à les prochaines <rire> élections provinciales. <laughs> I, think, I think you'd rather be under the Chinese torture. <laughs> <laughs> the water <laughs> torture. <laughs> yeah, water torture. <laughs> with Mr. Legault and be in the same room with Mr. Skeet. Okay, and that's not to say anything uh, disparagingly about them. But I'm going to share not the secrets, but a big secret between you and I. Really big. So I hope everybody's listening and I will explain. Marlene and I are sisters. It may not be obvious to everybody considering the color of our skin or where we come from, but let me explain. Marlene and I have known each other for over 40 years, yeah. for those who don't know. Yeah. And first, we were friends. Yes. But we really bonded as long lost sisters when we both sat in the House of Commons or served uh -huh. the Canadian public, if I may say, as members of parliament. Yeah. And as you all know, if you have siblings, there are certain personal traits that are shared between sisters. So let me outline some of them. Yeah. Marlene and I are known to not walk warily and to be loud when we want something. Marlene holds the record, by the way, for anybody who hasn't been in this country or hasn't followed politics, she actually holds the record for being the loudest heckler in the House of Commons. And my ears are still ringing, Marlene, from when you actually said the no. And maybe if you had been in the National Assembly, your loud no may have made it not possible to adopt Bill 96. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. You may have swayed other people away or they would have walked out of the National Assembly, one or the other. Also, both Marlene and I have a certain weakness for Greek and Italian foods. But more importantly, for Greek and Italian men. <laughs> 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 our sisters who support, encourage uh, each other, and have always had each other's backs, yeah. Marlene. And that is what, is what sisters are. But dearest sister Marlene, I could say so much, but I was given limited time. So can I say that I am blessed and grateful that you are part of my life. I am also in my opinion, Marlene, you epitomize, as others have said, the main qualities of great leader. Integrity, compassion, uh, humility, um, dignity, and your unending enthusiasm for any issue that you take on, and many more other qualities 
that you brought to the leadership of the Quebec Community Groups Network and that you dragged me into also. <laughs> and you say it's really good already. <laughs> okay, and I'm glad to be there, by the way, in case anybody thinks I'm not. Very happy to give my uh, knowledge also to the Quebec Community Groups Network. So as your sister, dear Marlene, or marvelous Marlene, Marlene is what I wanted to use, really Marlene. I speak for everyone tonight, I think, in saying that thank you. Thank you so much for leading this organization through the most tumultuous and difficult times and for standing up for all of us. You rock. Thank you so much. Bonsoir à tous. Eleni, um, when Eleni says that we're sisters, that's what we are. We forged our family connection over more than 40 years. And to me, a sister is someone that I can go to anytime I can share anything with and have complete trust that whatever she says is going to be because she loves me. And that means there are times that Eleni and I were <laughs> on opposite ends of an, a position, of an issue, but we were able to do it if we squabbled, we did it in private. In public, we were very respectful when we gave our different opi differing opinions. So nobody would have ever known that, you know, we had, you know, a real, you know, dust up in <laughs> private. That's what family is. Family is, I can pick up the phone at three o'clock in the morning and call Eleni and know that she'll pick she'll pick up and she'll be ready to do whatever I ask. Eleni, I love you. I love you and, too, Marlene. <laughs> and we still have our Greek vacation to plan. Absolutely. Uh, Italy and Greece. Remember? Italy and Greece. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on for it, maybe next year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eleni. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Eleni. And, and maybe I can join you on that trip. <laughs> My favorite places. <laughs> okay, now I'm pleased to call on Jerry Cutting. Jerry is uh, from the townships. He is a Townshippers Association president and is a former vice president of QCGN and a winner of the Sheila and Victor Goldblum Distinguished Community Service Award. The former Director General of Champlain Regional College in Lenoxville assumed leadership roles for causes such as educating the young, assisting the needy, and ensuring that accessible health and social services continue even as the number of English speakers declines. Even before party, the Parti Québécois came to power in November 1976, Jerry and other members of the English-speaking community realized they had to organize. In 1973, they formed the Social Action Group. When the challenges posed, well, posed by the French Language Charter came up, Jerry helped create the Townshippers Association, serving as president, and I quote here, he said, if you're a member of the English speaking minority, you must become involved, not just as a recipient of policies and services. We've got to be there at the policy making level. We've got to be there in deciding what's going to be done. He added, it's up to us to shape the destiny that we want for our children and grandchildren. So true, Jerry. Thank you, and please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You know, Marlene, I'm probably one of those people who came into your life a little bit later, and I, I was kind of scared because <laughs> you have a reputation. <laughs> I, I didn't have that experience of seeing you now, that warm, cuddly, uh, loving, outreaching person. I saw you as, you know, a killer wolf who was going <laughs> for the throat. And I thought right away, this woman is my kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, well, one of the things that immediately happened when we finally did meet 
we had an almost instant uh, understanding Connection. where we want to go, what we want to do. And it was done in a way where we were able to communicate often, you know, it happens every so often. One of us could start a sentence and the other would finish it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that I, I believe was, was a part of being able to look at how uh, I was able to help in, in, in some small part to put enough backing, confidence in a woman who lives by courage. And I think if you look at what, what is one of the most important values, attitudes you have to have, you can't have integrity unless you have the courage to follow through in your values. And I have to look at Marlene. Marlene comes from the most downtrodden minority in the world. She's a woman. Add to that, she's a black woman. Add to that is that she's seen as an Anglo woman in what has become a most anti-Anglo uh, setting. Yeah. To survive that, you gotta have courage by the bushel. Now, the one difference that me and Marlene have, I'm a hayseed and I love to garden. And look at her this evening. What is she <laughs> in the background? All of those green things, she hates them. She likes those because they're make-believe. Yes, exactly. And, but I, I think more than anything else, to say thank you to you, Marlene, it is from a community out here in the regions, you know, um, often when people talk about people in the regions, well, they're, they're kind of like, oh, um, are they almost civilized? You know, are they all, what is it then? But you know, Mar Marlene was so comfortable with us and what we always understood, so clear in her policies, her statements, everybody is at this table as an equal. Doesn't make any difference where you come from. Doesn't make any difference if you're English. Ou si vous êtes francophone, on est tous ici ensemble. That's what we have to carry forward in the face of the most oppressive bill I think that has ever been passed in a G7 democracy. And what we look for then is the recurrent theme, infection. She is very infectious. She spreads something. She spreads courage. And if we've got the courage to stand up, we can be barking dogs, but we're gonna bite sometimes. And that's one of the things I really recognize in this alpha female. When it came time to bite, she knew how to bite. When it came time to talk, she knew how to talk. When it came time to extend her arms in an open friendship gesture, she knew exactly how to do it. And she ain't going to stop no matter what. I, I'm absolutely convinced of that. So as, to, as one outgoing president to an already outgoing president, Here's the best compliment I think I can give to you. I have a granddaughter. She's 12 years old. If she would ask me, you know, who do you think, who do you think is kind of a, is someone I ought to look up to? I wouldn't have any hesitancy. It is the Honorable Marlene Jennings. Thank you. Jerry. Thank you so much. I learned a lot from you as well, because you have such experience and you have a way of expressing sometimes diff on difficult subjects, but doing it in a way that it doesn't divide them. And I um, thank you. One, for your support from the moment I stepped foot in QCGN just as a volunteer on, um, you know, the uh, community development action plan, etc. back in 2017-18, um, you were welcoming and you were always there if I needed advice. 
um, you were also always there when I wanted to complain about something <laughs> and know that it would just stay between the four walls. And you were always there even after I became president and you were no longer on the board. I knew I could pick up the phone, that you would respond, that I could speak with you confidentially and have full trust that the advice that you gave, that your ideas that you put out were solid. Um, thank you. And that's a, a heck of a compliment to say if your daughter, your 12 year old granddaughter um, asked you who's a woman she should look up to, to give me as the example. That's a real honor and thank you. Big hugs. Thank you, Jerry. I told you gonna be crying at the end. Um, Almost there. I just, <laughs> I just want to <laughs> I remind that, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to remind everybody to send, not to forget to send messages in the chat and we will be uh, saving them for Marlene and she will be seeing them all. And now I'd like to ask uh, QCGN Director General Sylvia Martel Forge to take the floor or the mic. The mic, thank you. Well, before um, my long awaited remarks, I have something really special. Clifford Lincoln would have liked to be here this evening and couldn't make it, but I have his remarks and it's hard for me. Now I'm going to cry. It's hard for me to use my voice to give Clifford Lincoln's remarks, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I Dear Marlene, I feel very fortunate that our mandates coincided in federal politics, whether at the Quebec or National Caucus or at the House of Commons, I recall your voice resonating, not only loudly and clearly, but with decisiveness and determination. There was never any ambiguity or fuzzy language in your interventions as you promoted or defended the causes you espoused. Those causes were inevitably tied to the human condition and to an open society of fundamental justice and equity for all, regardless of background, color, or creed. These are the values you brought with you as president of the QCGN. Yours happened not to be a regular or normal mandate. It was a time dominated by a political context of constant assault on those fundamental individual and minority rights for which both the QCGN and yourself stood so convincingly. It was an especially challenging and sensitive time which called for leadership that rallies not only the membership, but even more importantly, members of minority communities at large suddenly anxious and feeling betrayed. Not only did the QCGN become the recognized and central rallying point for all those battling for fairness and equity in the face of undemocratic legislation, but you led with concrete actions which consistently brought to the fore the case for fundamental equity and rights, the press conferences, QCGN hearings, the participation in nationally assembly, national assembly hearings, and all of it culminating in the impressive protest march to the premier's office, a march characterized not only by its numbers, but by its diversity and its remarkable sense of peaceful decorum. Thank you, Marlene, for a mandate which stood out because of the advocacy and tenacity of your leadership. I know I am one of many to express sincere appreciation as well as warm wishes for the days ahead. I can barely get through this. Okay. <sighs> Clifford, you've always been one of my heroes. You have always been someone who stood up for fundamental rights and that phrase, rights are rights are rights, is something that resonated with me 
and has resonated with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Canadians, not just Quebecers. And for you to describe me as you have um, is such an honor um, because you're kind of like, like I said, one of my heroes. You're someone that I've always looked up to. Um, you're someone that I have always admired precisely because you stood for fundamental human rights. And so to hear you talk about me with such laudatory um, language and remarks, um, you brought me to tears. I had to get a Kleenex. Um, thank you. And um, I understand that you can't be here, um, but I really appreciate that you took the time to write your thoughts down and to share them with me. Thank you so much, Clifford. Well, I'm done. So <clears throat> I feel I should have a scotch and a cigarette <clears throat> to do this next bit. Uh, and it's a hard act to follow. Uh, the singing, the other roasts, um, it's a tough act. However, I'm going to ask all of you to think about why I think Marlene reminds me of a ginger cookie. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Certainly not because of her red hair. No. However, the analogy does carry a bit. There's a popular stereotype. There's a bit of an echo. Oh, Marlene, could you? You're going to spoil my show here. That better? Yes. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Certainly not because she's a redhead. We've all agreed to that. But the analogy does carry a bit. There's a popular stereotype that revolves around gingers, that they are strong, assertive, some say sexy. But they're rooted in the belief that redheads have got an attitude of their own, and you simply can't mess with them. So what do you think? I mean, that kind of, after all I've heard tonight, that's Marlene. Actually, my comparison is because of my grandmother Blanche Lavoie Baudin's Christmas baking. My favorite timeless cookie, ginger, cinnamon, and cloves, a trifecta of warm, spicy flavors that are irresistible. Crunchy, um, crunchy and biting, Biting, we've heard that word, crunchy and biting on the outside, comfortably soft on the inside. That is a short snapshot of the profile of the QCGN leader staff have worked with over the past 18 months. That's what we felt for the last 18 months. For the longer list that we all feel very strongly about, I'm going to use my favorite style, alliteration. So stick with me. Inspiring, intimidating, incisive, intelligent, irreverent, intrepid, inclusive, idiosyncratic, indomitable, Inimitable, insightful, insistent, et j'en passe. Oh, I forgot one. Irreplaceable. Marlene, thanks for the memories. And from the staff of the QCGN, you can go home and have a glass of Prosecco. There you go. That's my roast. Marlene, you can have a two minute rebuttal. Do you think you can do it? Sorry, I lost connection. I've been listening to you and laughing and I can't wait to get my hands on that bottle of Prosecco. 
know. See, I don't really like alcohol, but I love Prosecco. So my rebuttal, my rebuttal is I'm nothing like anybody who spoke this evening described me as being. I'm actually a demure, shy, um, <laughs> mealy mouth, mealy mouth, intepid, um, cowardly, sexy woman. <laughs> my family could tell you stories. So who you see before you right now is pretty much who my parents saw when I was a child. And my father and I, my brothers and sisters tell me that my father and I would get into discussions and debates. And they would walk into the room, like they the living room and they'd see that we were talking, they walk right back out. And my father would say, you're gonna be a lawyer when you grow up. And I'd say, no, I'm gonna be a child psychologist. <laughs> All it took was one course where I had to follow a two-year-old and track that two-year-old's development for an entire semester help me to understand that uh -uh, I'm not going to be a child psychologist because I'll wind up in prison. I'll knock those little buggers, you know, out of the room. Well, I didn't do that with my daughter, but by the time I had her, I was 41 years old. So I had done a little bit of growing up. I love life. And notwithstanding the fact that I can say really hard and nasty things in a humorous way, I actually like people. <laughs> Doesn't always show, but I do. But I want to say, everybody who has spoken this evening, um, you all have a special place in my heart, one. Two, I've learned a lot over this last 18 months, Lee, being uh, president of QCGN. And the last thing I'm going to say is, is no one can stifle my voice. No one. My parents couldn't do it. My seven siblings couldn't do it. The Liberal Party of Canada couldn't do it. Um, the House of Commons couldn't do it. No one can stifle my voice. So expect to continue to hear my voice. And as much as possible, I want to continue on the path that Clifford Lincoln has um, made, which is to stand up for fundamental rights and freedoms of everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, Marlene. So let's all chat. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Oh, sorry. Unmute. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed yourself as much as Marlene seems to have. I think that all of us are here because uh, we love our community. We love our leadership and we want to support each other. So thank you. Um, tomorrow uh, we have... Um, a policy forum starts at uh, 8.30, start early. Um, and uh, I wish you a safe dodo <laughs> so that you can, I was going to say safe way home, but nobody, everybody's home. A good dodo, a good dodo. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. And I, um, maybe Jack could lead us in a song. At the end, <laughs> we'll start. Jack, we'll reach, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll at least hum with you. Good. Yeah. Thank I, you, I, everybody. I'm working on you and Sylvia. Jack, go ahead. You're on mute, I think. Sylvia? Are you there? Jack? We hear you, Jack. Not singing anymore. I'm working on you, and it's, uh, it's fun to work at the QCGN.
Jack, Jack we, we have, have to, to, we have to, we will have to record your song and put it on tape. So be prepared for that. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank, thank you. you all. Good night. Thank you. Bye, Marlene. Okay, Bye. Thank oh. you. Yes. Bye. Bye, everyone.